is going on, dude? What's good, man? Been a long time since uh, we spoke. Was it was it in October? Uh, in San Diego, I think yeah. so. Yeah, dude. I owe you, um, Bernie White. Last time I saw Bernie White, he uh, he saved my life by booking me an Uber. <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that was a good night, man. That was, fun. that was a fun night. Um, we're we're here. It was, a, it was it was a good time, and uh, we made it. But um, dude, how you been? So tell everyone really quick. We've had Bernie on, by the way, guys. And let, actually, let me give you a quick intro. We've had Bernie on before, um, and he's 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 really he's he's made some moves that I want to talk about. He's gone through some shit that I want to talk about, um, but we have had him on, but I want to just catch everyone up to speed. So tell everyone where, I know where you're at, but tell everyone where you're physically based right now. So I'm in San Diego, Ocean Beach, California. Yeah. And he's clearly allergic to money um, because he just likes, like, what kind of, uh, what kind of Vaseline do you, uh, do you use when the IRS comes and shoves it up your ass? <laughs> I don't even know. I'm man. just kidding, bro. I actually, there are parts of California I really enjoy. Um, and then there's parts of like, dude, white, you're living there and you're getting screwed, but no, San Diego's dope. I'm Orange on the beach. Dope. I can, I can see the ocean from my bedroom window. That's badass. That's badass. And like where we were in October, like just sitting there looking at the ocean, that's, that's, you can't beat that other than, you know, maybe going to Florida, but that's becoming a little cliche. Let's be honest. I mean, today it's like a heat wave and it's 81 degrees outside and we're all like freaking out. True. Weather's dope. Weather's freaking dope. Um, okay. So you're in California. Um, when we spoke last time, I know you had at least a deal, but the reason I wanted to bring you on again is because guys, when you get into this business, everyone gets excited. Everyone's got the honeymoon phase. This is awesome. I'm going to be able to quit my job. I'm going to be able to do this and travel the world and buy the freaking Lambo or the G wagon and blah, 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 blah. And everyone's stoked. Right. And then you get freaking just destroyed. You get punched in the teeth and you call the business owner who's an absolute dick or you do you get a site um a, a google ad suspension or you spend a thousand bucks on ads and you don't close a deal and you're like oh that that hurts and that guys is when the business really actually starts and there's that cliche quote i don't know if it was muhammad ali or whatever and they like asked him how many sets or whatever he does and he's like i start counting after it starts to hurt whatever right it's kind of like that. Like you don't actually know what this is like for those of you that are sitting there and you dreaming about starting this business. And I'm not trying to shit on your parade. I'm just trying to be real with you. There's going to be a honeymoon. And then there's going to be that. You're going to sit there one day and go, Oh baby, this is, there's, there's a reason why this is great money because it is hard. And so I want to talk today because Bernie, um, he had some success. He, he did it and he, he went through a little bit of, um, uh, a try, I guess, trial tribulation in the beginning, got a deal and then kind of went through it again. And then just recently smacked a two spot in a single day. Didn't you get two deals in one day? Yeah. A couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Oh, dude, you've been seeing, I mean, I'm going to go inappropriate here. You've been watching the Adam 22 lane of the plug stuff. <laughs> no, I don't even know what you're talking about. Not, not, no, come on, dude. So I'll, I'll give the background. This, this video ain't going on YouTube anyway. Um, you know, do you know who Adam 22 is? No, I have no idea. This is, so it's, it's like, I think he's like a, like an artist or whatever. And him and his girl, they, they just do porn. Right. Like and, only, uh, what's that? like only fans shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. And so, but like, it's some weird thing where like, he has the, he gets like a pass and he gets, he gets the hall pass and he can go like do it with other, other girls and film stuff, but she has never. So the big thing that's like going around the news right now is he finally agreed. And uh, basically she went and found the most heavily endowed man in, on planet earth. So what I was getting at, cause I kind of missed the punchline cause you didn't know is I was going to say, when you got the two spots, <laughs> did you feel like lane of the plugs freaking dude that day? Um, how did it feel, bro? How was the two spot? There's something that slaps a little different about the two spot. It was good. I mean, so it's, it was kind of all set up because I just had like different seeds planted in different places, you know, just like calling different people, having people on the hook at different times, which is kind of how you got to do it. You have to always have something in the pipeline. And one of them, one of them was a referral call. So it was, I have this guy that I've been working with who's a real kind of a pain in my ass, but he always answered the phone whenever I call him, right? And like, didn't want to sign a deal, but like, I kind of kept him with me because he's like, dude, you just got to believe me. He's, he's 
he's also flipping houses, right? So he's like, my, all my cash is tied up, but I like, I do want to do this. He said, I can even get you other people, right? I was like, send me their names. And so I called the guy, his, his buddy who does pools, like pool building. Okay. Um, and this guy, um, you know, my guy in Tennessee called his pool building, building. He's like, let me warm them up for you. Um, I was like, all right, I talked to him. He's asking me all these questions. I tell him how it works. I was like, let me just send you a video, a real quick video, 10 minutes that goes over everything. And in the video, I'm even like looking at his location, right? I'm showing him like, this is the demand in your location and you're actually ranking here, but you're not ranking there. We can do all this shit. I sent it to him, didn't watch it and no response. I was like, dude, fuck this guy, right? Like, <laughs> And like four weeks later, I wake up and I check my email and I have a email notification from Loom saying an anonymous member is watching the video. Did, huh? Yeah, I was like, oh, I know he's the only one who has the link. So I was like, he watched it. I was like, should I call him right now? I'll just wait. I, I didn't call him. I was like, I'm gonna, I was kind of thinking about it. And meanwhile, I already had a different like um, closing call set with, with that uh, same that same with site a with a totally different guy. Oh, so, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So two hours go by, and the guy calls me, the, this referral guy, and I was like, "So you watched the video?" He's like, "Yeah, I just watched it." He's like, "I'm trying to get this signed up like right away. How can we do it? All this stuff." And I was like, "You know, pump the brakes, dude. I need to like look at the numbers for what it would cost you and all that stuff." And I was like, "I have another call in a few minutes," and I did. And that's when I um, I got on a call for window tinting, which is not a niche I would recommend going into. It sucks, but it was it was actually one of Shiv sites. Shiv was like, "Can you sell this? Can you <laughs> um, off, like unload this trash?" And so I sold that. Then I called back my other guy, the pool guy, and I was like, "Listen, it's I took a look at the numbers, like compared to the volume of like that pool building gets in this city and that city, and it's nowhere near my like what concrete is and." That's who referred him as a concrete guy, right? I was like, the only way this works is if we do three sites right off the bat and like capture the volume in this city, that city, this city. And then he wanted to do like 12 sites. He's like, oh, well, if that's all it takes. I was like, so I don't, we shouldn't go that big. Um, and so he talked me into, what we settled at is doing six sites in six different cities. He just wants to capture all of it. And it's for four grand a month. Um, oh, you didn't tell me this was a freaking... Adam 22's girls guys deal, dude. Yeah. So, I mean, Bro, it's a pretty big deal. 4,000 bucks? 4,000 a month, uh, six month contract. And it's for six sites. So like generally I want to charge more for a site, but yeah. I, I was telling him, I was like, I would need three sites, I think, to, to get you a decent flow of calls. Um, I didn't want to kind of like over promise it, you know, and see how it goes. But he signed up and it was like, Right after that, I called back the window tinting guy because I was like, I'm on a roll. I called him, didn't even get on a Zoom call with him. I closed him on the phone. Um, and that was after that, I was pumped. I was like, dude, I just closed two deals in the same day. And that's that's when I kind of shared it with a group. And one of them was a $4,000 deal. One of them was a $4,000 deal, yeah. Bro, that's a big boy deal. I think um, we've had a couple bangers in here, but that's got to be one of the biggest deals I've heard of. And I know you got a, uh, you got multiple sites, but the end of the day, dude, it's, uh, it's 4,000 bucks. And, uh, that's, that's crazy. That's actually really cool. Um, and that was in pool building. That was in pool building. Yeah. So I haven't gone into it yet, but I'm outsourcing all the site, but I have a team now that I do like who builds all the sites. Um, and I'm, you know, just kind of using the same approach as I don't, I think with six sites, he, he should get legitimate volume. I'm yeah. getting on the GMBs and stuff. So, so actually what I did for this guy, because I didn't know how well I was going to deliver, I was like, I'll give you the first month free um, if you sign a deal. And he's like, all right, which kind of gives me some time to set up six landing pages and six websites and stuff like that. So there's no like sweat and after two weeks, you know, I don't want him to give me four grand right away. And he's like, where's all my leads? I was yeah, like, true. give me some time to set this shit up. Um, and that was kind of a, I think, it's kind of a good way to like, if you're not sure you're going to close it, give them a month free. Cause I, this guy didn't send them any free leads yet. He, it was a referral call. That's so the like, best part about referrals, but I know, I know what you mean. You want to make sure it's solid. Yeah. I was like, give me a month and I'll, I was like, I'm going to charge you um, in four weeks. And I signed a contract and everything. Uh, so it, you know, it seems pretty solid. You know, we'll, we'll see how long he sticks with me, but you know, I'm, I'm excited about it. Dude, um, what's crazy is I, I don't exactly remember the numbers, but when you got on last time when we were talking, 
you do like, I guess the question is this, can you imagine if when we talked six months ago or whatever, if I would have told you, Hey, in a few months, you're, you're going to be asking somebody for $4,000 a month. You would have been like, no, 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 dude. Well, like, well, dude, I, so this is my second 4k deal. Um, I have a guy in wow. South Carolina for concrete. Well, it started at 2k and I got it legitimately right. Like it's, uh, number one in the map pack yeah and, and he's getting like 60 70 calls a month from it and what i did is i texted him and i said hey i wasn't like do you want another i was like hey i'm building sites in this in this spot i'm building a site and you get the first access to it if you want it he texted me back he said let me call you tomorrow it, it was just a phone he called me the next day and he's like yeah let's do it he's like but i don't know about that location he's like could you do this location also i was like how about we do two for one I'll charge you um, 500 a week for both of them. And so now he's, now he's at a thousand dollars a week with me. Um, That's let me, let's talk about that for a second, guys. This is like the most underrated, untalked about strategy for anyone that gets deals. And for those of you that haven't gotten a deal, this is what's so exciting about go going and getting clients, especially by pre-selling and stacking, you know, five, 10 clients is once you get a good base, five, 10, 15 clients, you can, you're literally sitting on so much money because if you just crush it for that one client, then all you do is you sit there and you're like, okay, I'm going to look at every single one of my clients. One of them's in Dallas, one of them's in Phoenix, and one of them is in Vegas. I'm going to use that as an example. And I'm going to look at all, I'm going to do my due diligence. I'm going to look at the, the different, you know, cities and suburbs and, and whatever around their main city for the service that they offer. And sometimes that's the, the cool part is these guys offer other services. Like I have a, I have a cactus removal guy that also does block walls. So you go and you spend time and you research in Phoenix. You're like, let me look at Mesa. Let me look at Queen Creek. Let me look at Glendale. Let me look at Tempe. And you're like, dude, there's like four opportunities of, of lay down. Like there's no competition. You're like, okay, cool. And you do that for a couple areas and you do exactly what Bernie did is you just call him up. You're like, Hey, just want to let you know, there's no pressure, but I am not, do you want leads in this area or do you want to do this? You say, Hey, I'm building a site in Tempe. I know you're in Phoenix, but before I go and sell this to another contractor, are you interested? If so, I could probably do a package deal for you. It's the most sickest strategy ever. And it's the quickest way to go from, it's the quickest way, in my opinion, to increase your revenue, like 33% up to 50%, depending on where you're at. I've done this in fact, dude, this is how, this is one of the keys that I used to scale to hundred K is you're going to get clients that suck. That's just part of the game, but you're also going to get clients that are freaking hungry, that are hitting you up, that are like, let's go, let's build, let's do this. Like, it sounds like this guy's like, let's build 12 sites. So you need to take care of those guys or gals. And those people are going to turn you into a millionaire. You let's just say you have 30 clients, those two or three are going to make up 30 to 50% of your business potentially. And so what happened to me is I had two clients and uh, one of them started as a thousand dollar per month deal, completely accidental call. It was a lead from a niche. I wasn't even thinking about And I'm like, let me just send this to somebody because it came off the wrong website that led into a call into another call and another call started at a thousand ballooned into 25, $30,000 a month with 20, 30 websites. And so you look at a hundred thousand, you go, how, how am I going to get to a hundred thousand? Well, imagine if one client was bringing in $30,000, you're more than a third of the way there, right? So uh, all I want to do is highlight brilliantly executed. You crushed it on that. And then the best part too, guys, is if you want to go even a step further, you could, and you're like scared to ask, you could just put up a one pager, run a few ads and literally have a lead in hand and call your client and be like, Hey, I have this lady named Michelle. She's in Tempe. Um, you, I'll give you this one for free, but if you want this one, let's talk tomorrow because if not, I'm selling it to Bob. Who's also interested, blah, blah, blah. So easy. And how easy was the close? You didn't have to send him leads. None of that. Right. You just did it. Dude, we didn't, we had no zoom call. It was a text message. And then he got on a, he's like, let me call you tomorrow. Like I'm busy and yeah, no leads. It was, um, maybe like a 10 minute, 15 minute conversation. He's like, yeah, let's do it. Um, that's why, bro. That's why when I've said this before, the best marketing you can do, the best way to grow your business is to get your clients results. That's it. No. Yeah. If you're making people money, they'll, they'll hook it up.
So, you know, I, I told you I had that concrete guy in Tennessee and this guy, like he wanted me to do commission and I actually started with it because he wouldn't sign anything. And the only reason I really went for that is, well, I wasn't paying for ads anymore. It was so long story. I got a deal with somebody, built the site, ranked the site. That guy just goes, he stopped paying me. He goes to me, right? Um, even though I was delivering him leads. So I lost that client got another client on it. He ended up ghosting me, even though it was like 28 calls a month. I was like, dude, this fucking area sucks. Uh, <laughs> was so, this in California? No, no, this is in Tennessee. I, I just- Oh, like, okay. I was going to zing California. I won't. I think one of the reasons was the guy was kind of older and like, even though he's getting 30 calls a month, didn't, wasn't going to be able to- add Wasn't on. that hungry. He's like, eh. Yeah. yeah. So I had gone through every freaking, like I had hit it hard, right? In, in terms of the prospecting list. And I wasn't paying money for ads anymore, right? So the leads were all my only cost was the hosting fee and the call around number. So I had this other guy who I was prospecting for in North Carolina. And meanwhile, my Tennessee site is still getting lead. Like I'm seeing like this one guy wanted a foundation, like a hundred thousand dollar job. So I called my North Carolina guy. I was like, hey, how far would you travel to do this? Uh, and he's like, yeah, we'll travel. And so that's why I kind of stuck with him. I was like, all right, we can do commission for now, but I'm going to sign you onto a long-term deal. And so that part sucked, right? I'm, I'm dealing with this guy and I would call this guy like cussing him out. Like you signed the goddamn contract. And, but, but he always, he, he's younger and he always answered the phone. He's like, dude, I'll hook it up for you. And so I think just listening to my gut there and because he always answered, it wasn't good to me. I stuck with him and um, he was a business partner with the pool building guy. Right. They do, they go and renovate houses and build apartment buildings and shit and put in pools. And so that pool building guy had access to his email, like the business email. And he was seeing email notifications like every single day of like new concrete lead, new concrete lead, missed like just a call, all this stuff. And so after like the initial call, he didn't do anything with me. But then seeing all of those leads coming in to the email inbox and those call around notifications, that's when he went to my other guys like, dude, who's this guy? Like, let me close the deal with them. And then he called me, his referral call. Uh, but like that never would have happened if I wasn't delivering a shit ton of leads to the other guy. Yeah. So it really was a reputation thing. Dude, there's so many things I could extract from this, but I, I want to, I, I, I've written down a couple of things I want to hit on here in a second. But the main thing that I brought you on for that I want to make sure we don't miss, which is after the honeymoon wears off, how do you stay motivated? How do you stay excited to not just, eek by, but to be banging in $4,000 deals. So I'm sure that you dealt with it and let, we can have a real chat here and we can be honest about it, but we've all been in that spot. We're excited. And then it's like, oh man. And we question and, and every, we're like, hey, does this actually work? And are people actually making money or is everyone just lying to me? So for those people that are watching that have hit that, okay, honeymoon's over. Now we really, uh, we're really in this. How do you, how do you stay motivated? What are some strategies that you could give to stay motivated to keep pushing the needle forward? So a couple of things. So one thing, like you do have to believe in the in the model. If you don't believe in it, it's not going to work. You have to. Did you have doubt? Let me ask this. Let's be real. Did you have doubts about the model when you first started? Not when I first started, but it was around February, March. I lost like three clients after getting their after getting their credit card information. Then they like one guy just rejected the, the charge. I was like, what the fuck? Like, so, yeah. so basically he was too scared to tell you no and gave you the car. That's ridiculous. Went through a whole Zoom call and gave me his card. And the next day, like, and that happened like, and then there was another guy I charged him once and he paid once. And the next time the card wasn't um, working and I was calling, ghosted me. This is the same freaking site. Um, and like, I went through like three different people on one site who like gave me their credit card. Yeah, right? sure. and I was like, Jesus Christ! Like, yeah. Um, but now it's but now the site's ranked, so I, I was like, I, I'm not losing money on it. So it was kind of then where I was like questioning it a little bit. But like one thing that I kind of look at, and this is something I was reading about somewhere else, it's it's looking at like lead indicators versus lag lag indicators, which I'm not sure if you're familiar. That sounds with. really. That sounds like really over my head. I want to hear about it. So lead indicators. Well, no, it's, it's something I learned in like economics, where it's well, um, you. Would you actually are smart though, bro. Some of us barely graduated from like podunk USA. Let's talk about this lead. Well, so you can measure the health of different things by looking at lead indicators and lag indicators. Right. Okay. And so like, for, for example, like the, the economy 
would be like a leading indicator of the health. Like you can measure the health of the economy, right? A leading indicator would be like how, like how much are home buyer or home builders building homes? Because if they're building homes, it's they have are they're optimistic about the health of the economy. Okay. And so that's a leading indicator that the economy is going to be doing well. Same okay. thing with you can look at like the consumer price index, right? Like these are leading indicators that the economy is doing well. For lagging indicators, it's like like a leading indicator is basically indicators that are looking forward to outcomes. Lagging indicators are indicators that are looking back at whether that intended result is achieved. Okay. So like the lagging indicator for the economy would be like, what is the unemployment rate? Like now we know that the economy is shitty because the unemployment rate is high. Okay. What is inflation, right? But so you can measure the health of your business, like a lag indicator would be like, how much money am I getting right now? So how, much, how big is your bank account? That's a lag indicator that your business is healthy. How many like deals have I actually closed? I Lead in, and that's what we all look at. It's like, who's, who's the top dog? Who has the most deals closed? Who's making the most money? Yep. But like leading indicators are like equally as healthy to look at because it's lagging in here, it takes time. But if you're looking at like, how many people do I have on the hook right now? How many, how many prospecting calls have I done? How many due diligences and landing pages have I set up? Those will all lead to money. Right. So it's like, don't get so caught up in looking at the lagging indicators, which is like exactly how much money is in my Stripe account. But look at like if you leading indicators, things you can measure. And if you're taking care of those, the lag indicator will come. You, you know what I mean? Like it's like even in, like in the private group, we have a we have a dashboard of who's closing the most deals. Right. And that's those are lag indicators. Those have the, those are the top people. I, I promise you, if we had a different dashboard of who has done the most prospecting calls, who has sent the most Zoom or, or Loom webcasts out, those people would be corresponding to the lag indicators, right? It's, yeah. It just takes time. So if you just focus on those first things, it's going to happen. And that's, I started focusing on that and two deals came in a day because I had people prospected already um, and kind of planting those seeds anyway. So that's, I know that's kind of a little deep and but that's sort of how I look at it is focusing on those leading indicators. So, so for somebody that's kind of hit that wall, it's like, instead of going and looking at it and saying, Hey, I've been in, I've been doing this for six months and I've only made X amount of dollars or I'm only making $4,000 a month. Look at the lead indicators, which would be dude. But I also have four business owners on the hook, a right. referral. I still have to call blah, 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 blah. Right. Right. Just focus on those things that lead. Okay. you sort of talk about this in the, in the, in a different way, just like focusing on things that, move the needle right yeah. um and the more you focus on that like the lagging indicator which is how much money you're making it'll come like it will come dude that actually is so funny that you're talking about this because you see what the stream's called today right the stream says i love the money for sure but i love the hustle the most focusing on the freaking hustle dude focusing on the actual work itself and knowing that it's going to pan out it's like i freaking knew dude it's i mean it is it's the same concept same idea yeah. It's, it's focusing on the things that will lead to money and the money will come. Yeah, that's okay. So that's one of the things is you stop looking at, hey, I'm only at 3000 a month and Ryan Dalton's at 30 and oh man, I, I suck. And you started going, yeah, but I'm making this many calls. I'm hooking this many business owners. And like yeah. these things are going to add up to that ultimate result. Those are metrics you should be measuring. It's like, how many people do I have on the hook right now? Right. It's like, or how many, yeah. How many offers did I make this week? How many webcasts have you sent out? Yeah. Right? Like if, if, you are, if you're just planting those seeds, you will be closing deals. Like I have, a, I have a guy on the hook, right? I have a closing call on Friday. So it's, it's just, you should always have someone on the hook um, and you will be closing deals. So let's talk about that too, because I think people are like, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. More offers, more money, more offers, more closed deals. But how do I increase my offers? Like, what are some strategies? Because one of the things I wrote down that you, when you were talking was the reason that you are like making moves, doing deals, having success, excited about the business model, which by the way, I could totally feel it. And it gets me excited is you are, you are making enough, you're taking enough action that you are, ha you're seeing things come in, right? It's like you had that conversation over here and you said that screencast over here and you had, you know, you shook that hand there and you get, and it's like, you do enough of that, it compounds over time. And all of a sudden it may take three months. Well, how many weeks did it take for this guy to open up the Zoom? Four weeks. You did, you got, you made money today, for example, on something that you did four weeks ago. And some people start this business model and go, oh my gosh, well, Bernie's closing two in a day. 
but you forget that Bernie also sent four screencasts that day. Three of them never got watched. One of them got watched, but it took four weeks. And he did that plus this, plus this, plus this. And that's why, and he's got a closing call on Friday. So the key is guys, is how do you get, I like the term seeds, right? You do actually reap what you sow. If you're not talking to people and they don't know that they can have tra a transaction with you, you're not getting like, it's just math. Like you have to talk to more people. You have to be planting more seeds. You have to be asking for more money and just taking more action. And then that's, what's going to translate. But I think people forget because they're like, well, I've, I put up one website and I ran a hundred dollars in ads and I, my gosh, I can't believe I'm not at $10,000 and traveling the world. And it's like, dude, come on, bro. Yeah, it's just the more you talk to people, like, and so I, I, that window tinting guy, he was like, I, it was a small deal, but then he's like, can you build me two more sites? Um, so it turned into a bigger deal right away. And then he was like, my dad actually is trying to sell some shit for like HVAC. Like, could you give him a call? And like, even I've, I've done prospecting where they're like, that's a little too far, like, and, and sort of talk to them about what we do. And he's like, that's a little too far, but I'd, I'd be interested in roofing. Like, could you do that? And that didn't pan out because roofing is just so damn competitive. Um, but like, they'll just tell you and talk to you about like, um, like I, I have another guy. He's like, that's too far away from me, but you could build me a site here instead. Right. So it's like things that just turn out to be deals only because I called them. Right. Like it, if they, because the business model is great. They're like, oh shit, you have a website on the front of Google. It's kind of a turnkey operator. I just get the phone calls. They're like, could you do this for me? over here could you do this for my dad could you you know and the more you talk to people the more like business just kind of grows um but you have to get on the phone yeah you have to it's again it's so simple it's not easy but it's simple it's like more action more money um one thing that i thought was kind of impressive because and i'm gonna i want to ask your opinion on this and guys here in about three to five minutes we're going to take some q a so get your questions in the queue um, by the way, ask Bernie the hard stuff, ask him the personal stuff, ask him the stuff about like, you know, his sex life and stuff. He'll answer all of it. Um, just kidding, bro. Uh, so you said this guy, I, I, if I, if I heard your story correctly, you, the guy that you closed for 4k that he watched the loom four weeks later is, was it not a referral? That was a referral. Okay. Yeah. So here's my point. How many times have we got on the call and gotten a referral or talked to somebody that we hooked or that we did something for and gave something free to, and they don't respond exactly how we want them to. And we completely just are dick faces to them. I have, I've done it right. I like, Oh, okay. Screw you guy. You want to waste my time on the phone and you're not even going to call me back. And I sent you a screencast. And so I'm impressed that you did not, whether you did it on purpose or not, you didn't burn that bridge. That's why you were able to get that deal. So I want to talk about that for a minute. I'm going to share my thoughts, but like, what are your thoughts on that? Like, do you consciously make sure that you don't burn bridges? Yeah, for sure. And it, and it kind of goes to stuff that we were talking about earlier, or even like yesterday on, on yesterday's calls, like giving value up front, right? Like this guy that I was talking to me was really vouching for him. Um, and I didn't get the call back till I had already delivered him a shit ton of leads, right? Just being nice, um, just sending him a lot of leads, even though I didn't know that the pool guy was going to come in. Just there's no reason to burn. Like, you don't gain anything by burning a bridge, right? Like, what do you gain? So I just kind of keep him in the queue. And now they're talking about bringing in one of their roofer buddies because they're like, he does roofing for all of our housing shit. And we think he, like, we want to start selling more like gutter guard installations. And um, we're going to bring you into that deal. And, and it just kind of like, dude, these younger like home service guys, they're hungry if you find the right. And they have they have a network like they a lot of them have their own network. And you can kind of just grow it like that organically without spending money on ads. So it's like, dude, just I, I, I love that. And it's it's not really the thing that you hear out in the marketplace right now. Sorry, I've got like this this office chair mat, but it doesn't have the freaking grips on the bottom. So it just slides around. So I'm keep shifting. Um, but it goes against like this popular like thing. You see Steve Jobs was an ultra dick and you see this. It's like, the truth is um, you don't get very far by being a, a massive dick to people. And what I've seen, I have definitely been guilty of 
having a conversation, sending some leads, and then, oh, screw you guy. I'm not, I'm actually, not only am I not going to sell this to you, but I'm going to go sell it to your ex-wife. Like, obviously not, but like, that's my mentality. And mm -hmm. guess what? It feels so good in the moment. You're like, dude, I just got them. And, but guess what? At the end of the day, guess who doesn't make money? I've completely shifted into, excuse me. I've completely shifted now into like, how do I never burn a bridge, right? Even, quite honestly, even the people that have screwed me over, I've had people that have blatantly screwed, like screwed me over, cut me out of deals, whatever. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm, I'm never going to go hang out with them. They're not going to be my homie. But I, I just don't burn bridges because if you're going to be in business for any period of time, longer than the next month, it's going to come full circle. And you never know when that client today their dad becomes is or becomes the biggest concrete guy in the state or you never know when they quit they shut that business down but they open this other business and it takes off and they're like yeah I remember that guy he, they're still going to feel like hey I kind of owe that guy something because he gave me those leads the whole point of this guy is like I think we need to stop and I I know I need to check myself too but they're like you said dude there's no advantage to burning bridges it doesn't do anyone good. The only thing it does, it gives you that little moment of like, screw you, I'll show you. But last I checked, we're not in this business to collect moments of screw yous. We're in this business to make money, to live the life that we want to live. So I just want to put in a plug for like, you're going to have the contractor that screws you over. You're going to have the contractor that won't pay and whatever. Uh, you're going to have the guy that you give leads to. And then he's like, yeah, actually, I'm not that interested. And you can tell he just wanted free leads. I'm not saying get walked on. I'm not saying be okay with it. What I'm saying is don't burn a bridge because you never know when you're going to get a call. I, had, I remember getting a guy, uh, 2019, I pitched a guy. He didn't, I sent him all the leads. We did the whole thing. I was like, I'm getting him. And uh, he, I, I never would have guessed he would have said this, but he ended up being like, dude, I can't. I'm in the middle of a divorce. I want to show low income, you know, that, that whole spill. And I was like, oh my gosh, dude, Really? And, but something, I don't know, maybe I just didn't think about it, but I never was rude. That dude, a year later, came back, easiest close of my life, thousand bucks a month, had him for over three years. I made, you know, and that, by that time, the site was ranking, so we weren't spending that much money. I probably made over $30,000 in my pocket because I wasn't the douchebag to that guy. So just the plug, I know you guys see that. That's like the cool thing, to be a douche and to burn bridges and stuff. But guess what? What's cool to me is having a big bank account and making moves and doing deals. Um, I don't need to be everyone's friend, but I also don't need to make enemies. And that's kind of like this shift that I've had. So and I think that that's the way you should approach business personally. I don't know about you, but I think you agree. No, hundred percent agree. Love it, dude. Okay. Let's get into some Q and A from, from, from Mr. Bernie. All right. Let's see what we got. All right. Some of these people are saying Adam 22. Some people are pretending they don't know who Adam 22 is. They're hurrying unsubscribing from their subscription. I swear I've never heard of that. I'm not life. saying you, I'm just kidding. You know, it's funny. You don't know who actually was telling me about it was freaking old Shiv this weekend. Oh, really? <laughs> With them. I didn't know anything about this either, but I got the full scoop. Um, okay, Nadine says, smart move, not charging him the first month. Nothing worse than disgruntled BO that starts running his mouth if you can't deliver. Yeah, and and that that's also not the advice. Uh, across the board it's just that it felt like the right move and with that specific deal because it was big enough and it was a referral you could afford to do it i'm just clarifying we're not yeah, encouraging to just i wouldn't necessarily encourage it because maybe shit goes wrong and then you never get paid um but it's i think it's a much better way it's a much better incentive to close a deal like that than to just lower the price because if you think about a free month all right i'm out four four grand on this month not charging him, but if I lowered it to three grand instead of four grand, do the math. Like you're saving a lot more money for yourself, even though you're giving them a, a little bit there. Yeah. Um, and the free month seems to work better than being like, hey, instead of four grand, I'm going to charge you 3,800. And it's like, yeah. that the doesn't value is so much higher. And it's, um, and it kind of gets you off the hook to, at least for a, a big deal like that to be performing right away. Um, you know, I don't know if I'd get them four grand of value within six sites right away so yeah. it's like kind of building everything I got my team on it yeah just just use your head I, I do think it was the right move i just clarifying it's not the thing you do every time it just felt like the right move it was a referral it was situational so johnny yeah. we says how do i learn building sites and ranking them 
Um, well, two things. Number one, we teach that in the program, digital landlords. The other thing I would say is that uh, unless you already have a deal, unless you already have a, someone paying you, then uh, I wouldn't waste my time. Because if you don't get someone, if you don't learn how to get somebody to pay you first, then uh, you may as well learn how to crochet, croquet, crochet. What is it? Cro What's the thing where you knit? Both of those are real words. <laughs> huh? Both of those are actual words. Yeah, crocheting is where you do like the. the yeah, the, croquet is like a game that. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So yeah. Croquet is like the the gentleman's game, and then crochet is what my grandma freaking rips. She's dude, my grandma smacks crocheting. She'll sit in her chair and she'll rip like a pair of little booty slippers in, in an episode of Matlock, dude. Nice. It's sick, man. I, I'm like, Grandma, you got to start slinging these. But um, Johnny, just don't get it confused. And just always remember, until you get the deal, it doesn't really matter. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't focus on that. But like, you don't get that twisted. Focus on getting the deal first. And, and if you're sitting there going, well, I already know how to sell. Okay, then why don't you have a deal? Why don't you have a deal if you know how to sell so well? And by the way, uh, working at GNC, selling protein powder to people that are already coming in is not sales, okay? Yeah, so yeah, I would definitely recommend ranking your own stuff first, but I, I would definitely recommend outsourcing it once you have some deals because it's when you, I, I feel like every time I get a deal, I have to, like I'm going hundred miles an hour and then I have to pump the brakes to outsource, right? Or, or no, to do it myself, like, so it's like getting a team or, or even a few VAs. So I'm actually working with someone from Shiv's group now who they're, all they're doing is they're going all in on rank and rent, like ranking it first, then selling it later. And like they have investor, like they're building like 10 sites a week. Um, I think yeah. I know what you're talking about, by the way. So we'll talk about it later, but I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, so I'm working with them now for my all my SEO stuff because it's like, they'll just build me my sites and rank them. Um, so yeah, it's, it's great. Uh, and there's a lot of bandwidth there. Greg Rose says, uh, Shiv, it, Shiv Bernie is my dinner buddy. I don't know if there's an inside joke I missed or if you guys got. Oh, yeah. No, we did have dinner together in, uh, with Shiv in okay. San Diego. Yeah. Cool, cool. Thanks for the invite, you bastards. Just kidding. Hey, you all were just chilling in St. George, Utah. Uh, I guess, no, I know. I I'm kidding. Okay, 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 okay. Lost in the mail. I'm just kidding, bro. It was, it was specific. I'll, I'll give you the details later. Um, Let's see, b -b 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 what else we got here? Um, okay, Nadine says, eliminating distractions like comparing yourself to others is another way to move the needle. Yes, I totally agree with that. I saw this quote by Hermosi on, I think it was like a Facebook uh, post or a YouTube post. And he's like, you want to you, you want to know how to get stuff done? Turn off your notifications and set a 45 minute timer. You'd be amazed how much you can get done. Um, Dustin says, hey, Bernie, I'm interested in the pool building space. Is it common that concrete business owners work with, or work with or partner with other pool builders? I don't think not necessarily. So a lot of pool building, it's it's they're built with like gunite or shot creek, which is not the same as regular concrete. But what these two guys are doing is they're, they're going into like syndicate, like they're buying like four family home, like townhomes or, and now they're getting, they did three of these last year. And now they're getting into apartment buildings where they have investors who can help them buy a building when they see it and um, like a shithole and then just they'll just renovate it, put in a big pool and make it nicer and then rent it out for more. Um, and that's so like they are full time contractors, but that's kind of their hustle. And that's why they're partnered together is they can just go big and renovate a huge building and then rent, raise the rent basically is what they're kind of doing. Okay, uh, quick question, Bernie, what tool are you using for niche and city research? So I actually use Pineflock, which gives me everything. Um, I like SEMrush the most, but I'm, I'm actually starting to use Mangles a lot more because you can change the location of your search. So, so you can say Temple, Texas, and put it right there and then get the, um, you know, get the search volume for that, for just oh. concrete contractors instead of saying concrete contractors, Temple, Texas. It's so I, it's, I, but I'll, I'll honestly use both. Cool. Okay. Um, Yvonne says, Bernie, how long have you been doing this and how many business owners do you currently have? How many deals do you currently have is what she's saying? Or how much are you I, making? I started this in August of last year. So almost a year now. Okay. I've closed more deals than I have business owners because I have lost business owners, right? Like I've, I've signed business owners like three times who ghosted me. We all have. I'm at eleven grand, 
200 a month dude i didn't even expect i thought you were going to say like six but i guess you have those two big those two big deals nice work bro uh, so by the way i don't know if anyone knows this and i'm pretty sure you're still working a, a nine to five right yeah dude that's the most amazing thing is i love when people are like well i have a job so i can't do it i'm like well we have a bunch of people that are making a lot of money and they still have jobs so bernie actually has a nine to five and it's not like a you know, show up at the gym and like scan people in where you can just do whatever he, it's like a, like a big boy, real job, right? Yeah. It's, it's like government contracting implement. It's where it's a IT implementation. Okay. Yeah. I don't even know what that means, but it sounds really smart. So yeah, I'm going to go with that. Um, Josh says you mentioned team. How did you build that team? So that's kind of where, so I'll go back into what it is. Like, I have I have two different VAs who just like do random shit for me. Okay. But I'm, for my team, I'm working with this person in another group. And they're like I said, they have a team. So I'll just I'll just say the whole thing. So she brought this to her uncle and my grandpa, and they're invested. Like, we need to just build a shit ton of sites. And they have a team in India who's like, it's like an actual like IT company. Like they've worked with them before. They, they've done stuff for like Toyota and like drone tracking. And so like we built a team and we're going to build all these sites. And they actually came to me because like, since they're doing pure rank and rent, that's they're, they're get like, they don't have the deals yet. And so they're, they came to me to like help them sell them once they're getting ranked. But they're like, since they have all this overhead for a team, they're going to start selling SEO to companies. And like, can you help us sell us once we get those leads in? I was like, yeah, sure. But before I do that, I want, to know what I'm selling. And so now I have that, it's like a team of like 12 people who just do all the stuff that I need. Cause I've outsourced it before to like different white label firms, like a little bit of here, like a little of this there, a little of that there. But now I have this team who's been trained to do all my backlinking, all my citations, all my blog posts, all my service pages, Google stacks, silo, all this shit um, for cheap. And we're going to be selling SEO. So like we could do it white label too. Like if, if there's people in here who don't know how to put together a team, hit me up and we'll do it um, for, for cheaper than what you could do. It's kind of like training our own VAs who can, who have a ton of capacity. So that's been a big help, honestly. Um, Cause that one you can focus on selling, you know, you don't have to, it's, it's a lot of, if you're doing all the outsourcing or if you're doing all the SEO by yourself, you have like three jobs, right? You have to, selling as a job, the project management is a job and the SEO is a job. So it's like, you, you really need to unload some of that. And, work. and the client management, you actually got four jobs. And the client management. So you should really only be focused on like, I know you have people outsourcing your selling, yeah. um, which I'm not there yet. I, but I, have to I, have, like I have, I have an internal team that does my actual sales. Like my people do my sales. I don't do the sales anymore. I'll, I'll jump on a call and close a deal here and there, but uh, it's mine's, Mine's internal, but I think that you're smart when you're first starting out, like instead of going and hiring a, an entire team, you can, you can use these, these different strategies, these different people. And, uh, and, and again, it's all about, like you said, how do I get everything off of my plate except for sales? And then eventually we'll get sales off of our plate, but the sales is what moves the needle. So let's focus on that. And what happens in all these other groups and all these other programs um, well, not every one of them, but a lot of them is it's like focus on the deal or focus on the SEO, focus on the SEO. And it's not bad, but what ends up happening is you build 20, 30, 40 websites and you don't have any money coming in. That's a problem. So anyway, right. quick, yeah. let's do one more real quick. At what monthly income will you quit your job? I don't know. So I haven't, I haven't matched my regular monthly income from my job yet. Um, and I feel like once I match it, then it's like, well, now I have double my income. So like to quit the job, it's, I'm losing all that income. You, um, if your job's, I mean, it's a real job, but if it's flexible enough that you've been able to build, and, and I know you work remotely, right? It is. Yeah. So I work remote and do, well, I just got a new job because they came to me and oh. I get every other Friday off um, and it's remote. So it's not that tough. I, I think my goal is 30K. If I can get to 30K, which I think I can, then it's like, I don't need this extra income or the headache, yep. but right now I'm still like, what if I lose a client, you know, like all yeah. that stuff. So right now it's just great extra income. And now it's like, well, let's go on vacation. Let's go buy a new couch, like whatever. It's just like extra money to have. I think once I hit 30 K it'll be, I'll be ready to just quit my job. Cause I don't need it. That's rad, dude. Okay. 
Bernie White, I appreciate it, dude. It's got some freaking nuggets. This is a great, um, this is a great call for us to have as our last. Uh, did you catch? Did you hear what I was saying before you jumped on? Yeah, dude, you're ranting at everybody, like yelling. <laughs> Um, I've, yeah, that's, I had it up on Facebook. That's why the echo happened when I, I haven't it. even gotten started. No, but uh, real quick, one last reminder for everyone's on. By the way, thanks for jumping on, Bernie. Stand for two seconds. Um, uh, everyone, give Bernie a thanks in the comments for dropping some heat on us. Um, and and I, all of you should go and find his other interview and watch how much he's progressed in confidence and excitement in in like where you were at in terms of your business. It's like. A lot has changed in a few short months, and that's the exciting thing about this business model. But um, for those that weren't on the beginning, this is our last live call as you know it, as we've been doing it, where you can just hop onto Facebook, click on the link. We are now going to be doing it differently. Every single week, I am going to be putting up a form, and I'm going to be taking a certain number of people, and I'm going to be doing these calls on a more intimate uh, live on Zoom. The postings or the recordings will not be posted here. They will not be posted on YouTube. They will only be for those people. My reasoning is, as I described at the first, when you give away free too long, it loses the sizzle and you have to stop. That is what I'm doing. And the other thing is, is I want to work with the people that are the most serious. And we got, I mean, we got a lot of serious people and I, I know who you are. I appreciate you. I see you. But we also got a lot of mental masturbators, like legitimate the best of the best, um, right up there with some of these OnlyFans people, right? Just, just mentally. And they want to jump on these and mow the lawn and think about what they're going to do, but they're never actually going to take any action. And for those people, it's like, dude, go, go consume someone else's stuff. I'm here to work with people that actually want to take action. So um, that said, um, no, Daniel Kong, you're going to be good, dude. Uh, he asked if anyone, any, by the way, anyone in Digital Landlords, what I'll do is um, when I go live, I'll post the Zoom link into Digital Landlords. So everyone in Digital Landlords that you guys have access, I'm just talking about people in the free group. So Bernie White, thank you, my man. Um, let's get together soon. Uh, I'll come down to California and we'll, we'll, we'll make it happen, dude. Yeah, dude. Uh, looking forward to seeing you. Okay. Appreciate you, bro. We'll talk soon. See yeah, you guys. See you.